Hello everyone, welcome to video E section. So in this video lecture, I will be explaining how the event handling will happen in Android. So first thing, what is event handling means? What is event means? What is events? So events are useful way to collect the data about the user's interaction. Whenever the users interacts, whenever the user interacts with application components, application components in the sense the buttons or touch screen or widgets or text view or edit text. So whatever you are going to use in the application framework. So whatever you have designed in your application, whatever the components that appears in the application. So whenever the user interacts with those components, such things are called events. So handling those events is called as an event handling. So what is event handling? How the things will work in event handling? So please remember one thing. So we are going to make use of listeners. We are going to make use of listeners. What is this listeners means? The listeners are nothing but the things that the uh, programming code which helps us to record what's happening in our application components. So, so event handlers can be, uh, there are seven types of event handlers that we will use in our Android. So I will explain one by one. First one is on click. First one is on click. What is this on click? So please observe, this is a method. So the naming convention that I'm using here is camel case naming convention on click. So this is empty parameters. We are not going to pass any parameters. So when, when this on click will trigger. So whenever you're going to click on button or whenever you're going to use some components, whenever you are going to click on that component, for example, just for instance, whenever you're going to click on submit button. So that will trigger this on click method. Whatever the logic that you are going to embed inside this method will be triggered whenever you are going to click on that particular button. That's the role of this on click method. So next coming to the next kind of action listener is on long click. The na action listener name is on long click. What is this on long click means? So if you hold any particular button for more than one or more seconds then it's going to trigger this method by name on long click. So for example, uh, if you want to some operate some components in such a way that you have to hold that particular component, then such methods, such things will trigger handler by name on long click. So coming to the next one on focus change. On focus change. What is this on focus change? So it's nothing but whenever you lose the focus on any particular component that is present in your, it works based on the focus. It works based on the focus. So user goes away from the view of the item, then this particular event will be triggered. Means for example, I am focusing particularly with respect to a uh, image that is present in my uh, Android app. So if I change my focus, that particular component means that this particular uh, event handler will trigger that the event name is on focus change. So it works completely based on the focus. So the next one is on key. Generally we are going to use this kind of uh, event handler when you are going to work with uh, uh, hardware components, hardware buttons. So this kind of on key, whenever you are going to press that on key, hardware key, this event will be triggered. Next, the fifth one is on touch on touch so it's nothing but whenever the user presses uh, releases any particular uh, component or whenever the user gesture is placed on that particular part of the screen so gesture it works based on the gesture so whenever the user gesture is focused on particular part of the screen this particular event handler will be triggered so the next one is on menu item, on menu item click. 
so please observe your so i am using your camel case naming convention camel case naming convention means if there are two words the second word will start from upper case letter so what is this on menu item click it's nothing but uh, the list of menus if you just remember if you just glance what is there so you can observe three dots in your whatsapp so out of those three dots if you click on those three dots you're going to check you are going to get uh, options such as about uh, settings profile pic like that you're going to get lot of options so such things are menu such kind of options is called menu so if you click on any particular option that menu item action will be triggered for such kind of events we are going to use on menu item click this this will work on only menu options so if there is a list of options so that will be used to perform some action if you click on those options this particular whatever the logic that you are going to place inside that uh, on menu item click will be triggered so the next one so the next one is on create on create menu context so whenever you are going to create a menus so the list of options this particular event handler will be used on create menu context to create the menus these are the seven types of event handlers that that are present in your android so just make i will make it simple what is events means it's nothing but whenever the user is going to interact with the components or the elements which are present in the your android application the events will happen so to handle the event we will make use of event handlers even you can call it as event listeners okay to collect the data so there are seven types of event listeners which are present in your android first one on click whenever the user clicks on that particular button this particular method on click will be triggered one good example for that one is submit button so on long click if you press any particular button for more than 1 second one or more second then this particular action uh, event listener will be used on focus change it's nothing but so whenever you are going to change the focus of your screen or you are going to change the focus of your fingers on the touch screen that particular what you are focused will be triggered by using the on focus change on key so please remember this so on key will be used only with respect to hardware on touch it is a gesture based one on menu item click so if you are working with a single button then on click if you are working with a list of options using menus so then we are going to use a action listener event listener by name on menu item click so to create the menus we will make use of on menu create context okay these are the five types of event handlers that we are going to use with to perform to perform to perform event handling to perform event handling so to perform the event handling we are going to make use of event listeners so the listeners we have totally seven listeners on click on long click on focus change on key on touch on menu item click on create menu context these two last menus related items uh, event handlers will be used only with respect to while working with the menus so if you are working with gesture on touch if you are working with hardware on key if you are working with the focus related action listener on focus change so if you are working with the click then we have two types of action listeners one is on click other one is on long click so the difference is only the difference between this on click and on long click is how many seconds you are going to hold that particular button okay so next just please remember one thing the basically to have the action listener the uh, event listener the most commonly used event listener will be this on click so in this session i am going to show how to use this on click action listener to record the action uh, done on a button by using a simple demo i am not going to make it complex just i am going to add a simple demo by using buttons so whenever that user clicks on that button the event should happen the event should be triggered by uh, by creating a simple message okay so before i make use of this on click so firstly i need to explain there are two ways to make use of this on click there are two ways to use the on click there are two ways to use on click which are those two ways one is direct other one is indirect so there are two ways to use the on click which are those one is direct other one is indirect what is this direct what is this indirect means i will make it simple so direct means one is direct 
So you're going to add the action list there directly. You're going to add the action list there. Action listener or event listener, both are same. Action listener directly. Second one, you are not going to add any action listener. That's nothing but indirect way. So where you are going to add the action listener in XML part. In XML part. These are the two ways to create the events to uh, event handlers to handle an event. One is direct way. Other one is in different textbook. They have mentioned this in the different uh, using different terminologies. So I will make it simple. One is direct. Other one is indirect. What is this direct means? So you're going to add the action listener directly in your Java part. In your Java part. You are not going to touch your design part. So what is indirect? You are not going to touch the Java part. You are going to add the action in XML part. You are going to add the action in on click action in XML part. So let me start with the demo by creating a simple event handling application. So where I'm going to print a simple message, that's it. I'm not going to do any complex thing here. Just I'm going to print a simple message. That message will be uh, just Nitin VVC Mysore. So my Android Studio is ready here. So I will create a new application. So as I mentioned earlier, we will make use of empty activity. Why? Because the empty activity is nothing but it's a white sheet of paper. So where we can design whatever we want. Okay. So next. So next I'm going to give. Here I'm going to give the title as event handling. Event handling application. Event handling application. The language that I'm going to select is Java. As I mentioned in the previous video. The minimum SDK level, API level should be 23. So if you make use of 23 means the application that I'm creating right now is compatible with 94% of devices which are present in the market. Okay, so I will click on finish. So it will create a new application. So here you have to wait for at least two to five minutes so that uh, uh, the Gradle will be built and your application will be ready for execution. So my Gradle is building. So just you can observe your the Gradle build is in progress. So it will take around five to 10 minutes, two to five minutes. So to complete this Gradle building process should be completed. So just observe here it's configuration configuring with the projects which are available. So the Gradle script is already available in your Android studio. Just it is configuring that with your project so my now the process is running so now the scanning file and please observe the gradle demo started successfully a moment ago so now my project is ready for the execution so before i start with the execution firstly i will go to design part just observe as i mentioned earlier so once you create the project so there will be two files one is java part other one is xml part so XML part is responsible for design. Java part is responsible for the logic part where you're going to place the logic. So please observe out of the two methods which we have, which I mentioned, one is direct, other one is indirect. As I mentioned earlier, direct method means where we are going to add the action listener in your Java part. Indirect method means simply I'm going to write a method here. I'm going to add that method in the XML part. Okay. So firstly, I will go to design part. So I will remove this hello word. Why? Because it's not required. Okay. So now I will add button to my design. Just drag this button and place it in your design screen. Okay. And set the cursors. Why? Because it's a constraint layout, right? So if you're working with the constraint layout means you have to set the cursors. You have to set the constraint towards the top, bottom, left and right. So now the button has been placed here. Okay. So once after placing the button, I will go to code part of design. Just observe. This is my design part. In the design part, I'm using the code part. Code in design part. Just observe. What is the, this is my code responsible for button. This is the code which has been automatically generated with respect to the button that I have added to my design. Okay. So in this code, just look at this ID. So this is what, which identifies this button uniquely. 
this is the one that is responsible for the identification of button so what's the id we have here so this is android prefix is common the attribute is id so this is the id responsible for identification of my button so what's the id they have given here up plus id slash button okay so please observe this part is prefix we are we don't have anything to do with this part the remaining thing that is present in this id is button what's the id of this particular button it's a button that starts with lower case letters this is what the id by using this id you can recognize this button in your java part okay so this particular attribute is an important attribute among all the attribute which are which are readily available here why because the id attributes identifies that particular component so while identifying that particular component it's there is no need of mentioning this at plus id slash why because this is a prefix which is commonly used for almost all the components which are going to appear in your design what is there after that prefix that is button that starts with lower case letter this will be used with respect to the identifying this particular button in the java part so next so we are done with so please observe your we are done with the adding button and what's the idea of that button it's nothing but button starts with lower case letter okay so next go to the java part okay so go to java part this is the java code with java code which is automatically created okay just please observe your just now we have created activity that's it we have not done with anything so what's the activity name the activity name is the activity name is main activity the activity name is main activity so please observe so as i mentioned earlier what's the idea of the button that we have added to our design button starts with lower case letter so first thing first thing after this content view so please note down this after this set content view in the next line in the next line okay just you are going to recognize the widget that we have added to our design what's the widget name that we have added we have added button right so we have added button so i will give the reference to that button what's the reference i will give btn you can use any reference you can use any variable it's left to you button the component that i have added is button the variable that i am using to recognize that button from here onwards is btn so i am going to call a method by name find view by id what is that find view by id so what is this find view by id what's the id that we have recognized in the previous design that is nothing but the button starts with lower case letter that i'm going to provide as a input for this particular uh, method so i'm going to use this method find view by id so which is a resource armens resource dot id dot the id starts with button right this is my id b o b u t t o n which starts with lower case letter we are done with the recognition of this particular button which we have added in our design in our java part based on what by using id by using what by using the id what's the id that is present in the design part button this is my button so go to text go to code part of that button what's the id we have b u t t o n which starts with lower case letter by using that id i have i am done with the recognition of that button so now the java part as connected with the design part by using that id that button has been identified by using that id what's the id b u t t o n which starts with the lower case letter so once i am done with the recognition of that particular button so now i will add now i will add the action listener for this button btn this is the reference right this is what the reference that i have given here btn btn dot there's a method by name set on click listener whenever the user is going to enter whenever the user clicks on this button this particular listener this particular event handler will be triggered so the button references what's the reference of button btn dot dot operator set on click listener okay set on click listener 
So this is a new on click listener, right? New. Just observe new on click listener. It's a, this is a new on click listener. So once you select this one, which will automatically override, which will automatically override the method, method by name on click, method by name on click. Just observe. I will click on this. So it has automatically overwritten the method by name on click. So now I'm going to place the logic here. So next I'm going to place the logic here. What's the logic? I'm going to make use of a simple toast message. So if you are not aware of toast messages, nothing but a simple message that you are, that is, which are, which, which is going to appear in your mobile screen. Uh, so just for your example, whenever you're going to send a text message, you're going to receive a toast message stating that the particular message has been received by this person. So whenever you're going to, whenever you're going to put your particular mobile into charge, so when the battery is full, it's going to show the message back, uh, uh, a message with a black background, which will appear for uh, one second, not more than one second. The such message is called toast message. I'm going to create the toast message. Why? Because just it's a demonstration how the event handling will happen. Toast dot make text, make text. What's the text that we want to print? So the text should be printed in this particular activity itself. That's why I'm using a term called get application context. Even you can use this keyword here. This points to this particular application context. Or even you can use get application context. Okay, get application context followed by, I will give the message here, Nitin Kumar VVCE. The message is Nitin Kumar VVCE. So next I need to set the time toast dot toast dot length long means it should appear at least for one second dot show. Just observe it's a one line code to print a message by name Nitin Kumar VVC. So the message that I'm using here is toast message toast dot make text. So that should appear within this activity get application context. The message is Nitin Kumar VVC. It should appear for longer period of time. That's nothing but at least for a second and show this message. Okay, just observe. I have added only three lines of code here. First, this line. So I have recognized the button that is present in my design part. This is the button that is present in my design part. I have recognized this button. I have recognized this button in my Java part based on the Based on what? Based on ID. Once after recognizing that button, I'm adding the action listener. Once after adding the action listener, it will automatically override a method by name on click. Inside that method, I'm creating a toast message. So toast message that will appear only within that particular activity. So what's the message that I'm printing? Nitin Kumar VVC. It should appear for longer period of time. Means long means at least for a second and show that one okay so just observe i will execute this code and it will uh, you can see the output here itself so whenever i click i click on that particular button it should print a message it should show the message that nitin kumar vvc this kind of method is called this kind of method is called hmm, direct method the direct way of handling the events where we are not going to work with the XML part, just whatever the changes that we are going to do, we will do it in the Java part only. First thing is, firstly, we are going to identify the widget or the component. Next, we are going to add the action listener. Next, we are going to place the logic for just for your convenience. Here I am placing only toast message. That's it. I'm not placing anything other than toast message. So if required, you can place whatever the logic that is required whenever the user clicks on that button that logic will execute okay just three steps firstly identify the component next add the action listener next place the logic inside the on click method that will be automatically overwritten by the on click listener so now my application is ready just observe so my application event handling application with the button so now if I click on this button, it should print a message Nitin Kumar VVC. Is it visible? Just observe. So if I click on this button, 
you we i am getting a message nitin kumar vvc this is what we call event handling by using on click so one hour i click on this button it will trigger the method that is present in this on click so inside this i have placed a simple logic to print my name and my college name that is nitin kumar vvc this kind of adding the action listener this kind of adding the event handler is called direct way this kind of handling the event handler is called direct way okay just as i mentioned earlier we are going to follow three steps here first step after the set content view the first step find the component in java part based on the id second step add the action listener so once you add the action listener it will automatically override a method by name on click inside this on click you can write whatever the logic you want so here just for your convenience i am using i am making use of my name to i am printing that that's it okay so please observe next way second way so just i will remove whatever i have inserted right now just i will remove this method and set content view button and action list now okay this is what we had okay so just i have removed everything whatever i have added with respect to direct method with respect to direct method the second way is indirect method what is this indirect method means is there any alternative so this method is easier compared to the previous one we have discussed indirect method is easier why it is easier just you are going to write the logic as per your requirement by giving the function name by giving the function name so you are going to place this logic inside the xml file so with respect to direct method firstly we need to identify the component or the button or whatever the component that is present in my application then we need to add the action listener then we need to write the logic inside that on click but with respect to indirect method firstly i am going to write the method which is required as per my requirement public void enter whatever the name you want you can give that okay so and i should provide the view i should provide the view okay so next i need to write the logic that is required as i mentioned earlier so here i am using the same logic which i have mentioned in the direct method so that is toast dot make text get application context means this particular toast that message that i am going to print will be applicable only with respect to this activity next i am going to print a message here i am going, here i am going to change small make a small change btu mysuru to show the difference whether it's executing or not okay so and then i am going to print a toast message for i need to mention the length this is length long dot show okay so please observe instead of doing the complex thing what we have done in the previous direct method such as firstly i need to identify the component nextly i need to had the action listener next inside that on click i need to place this logic right this is what i have done in the previous method which is direct way of calling the method so this is indirect way where i am going to use my own name i have given my name enter so even you can give your name that is i will give name nitin whatever you want you can give that particular name okay so by using that name i have written a method the method name is nitin for that for every individual method you have to provide the view so inside that i have used the same logic in place of printing nitin kumar vvc here i am printing vtu mysuru okay so vtu mysuru so please observe so apart from writing the method like this you need to do one another thing that is go to java xml part go to design part this is my xml design part right this java is logic part this is my design part go to design part in the design in the design go to code part go to code part so wherever you feel comfortable make a single space make a one line space like this you can do it in this line or you can do it in the last line wherever there is no issue that you have to insert this in the first line itself you have to insert in the third line is not like that so wherever you feel comfortable you can insert in that particular line so we have a method by name on click is it visible the method name is on click so the method that i am adding here is nitin so please observe whenever the user enters whenever the user clicks on this button okay 
so the method nitin will be automatically triggered what's there in the method nitin so inside the method nitin i have toast message which prints vtu mysuru is it clear so write however you want logic by using the function name public void whatever the name you want you can give that particular name and please remember for every individual function that you are going to create the view must be provided you must provide the view so then you place the logic whatever you want inside that particular function so once after writing the function like that go to design part okay in design part go to code part wherever you feel comfortable inside that component wherever you feel comfortable make a one space line and place that particular method using on click how to place that using the on click just observe i will place it in the first line itself on click what's my method name nitin is it simple which one is simple direct or indirect as per my suggestion wherever it's convenient to make use of indirect method it's better to go with indirect itself why because so if you make use of direct method means the length of the code as well as the uh, it will increase the number of flower braces so as the number of flower braces increases that leads to confusion so in in this indirect method there is no need of using those many flower braces or there is no need of using the action listener there is no need of calling the action listener there is no need of identifying the component just you are going to write a method as per your requirement by using the name that you want you can give any name and you are going to write the logic in the form of function once after writing the logic in the form of function go to design part that is nothing but xml part in the java in the code part with respect to this xml so you can make a space wherever you feel comfortable with respect to that components so you have to identify that component okay the component name is button so within that code within that closing tag so make space wherever you feel comfortable add a attribute by name add a attribute by name on click and place that method inside that braces okay just observe i will execute it once again let's see uh, how it executes so it will take 2 minutes to execute let's see how the output will look like so this is my new changed application so as per my requirement i should get the output vtu mysuru in place of nitin kumar vvc which i have obtained by using the direct method so please observe is it visible so we are getting the output vtu mysuru that means we have this output is through indirect method that i have that i have implemented right now just please observe whenever i press this button that is present in the xml part this code which which i have automate which i have written directly by name nitin will be automatically triggered why because i have placed it I have placed it in the xml part using the on click using the on click inside that button i have placed using the on click the method name is nitin which is present in the java okay so whenever i click on this button which will automatically trigger that method so which will perform the event handling so this is the indirect way to make use of on click please remember so till now i have discussed about uh, four event handling uh, uh, event uh, handling handling uh, listeners out of those four event handling out of till now i have discussed seven event seven event handlers out of those seven event handlers the first one the on click is the one which will be frequently used among all those things so firstly if I, finally i am going to conclude this session this video what is event handling it's nothing but the how the user interacts with the components which are present in the application so this is what we call events how this events are handled by using the event listeners or even you can call it as a action listeners as i discuss as we discussed there are seven event uh, listeners first one on click on long click that is with respect to clicking whenever you click the button for smaller duration of time on click for longer duration of time on long click so then we have two event handlers for menu that is when on menu item clicked on menu create context then we have on key that's for hardware and we have on uh, on focus that is with respect to whenever you are going to focus any particular component in your screen that particular event handler will trigger on touch with respect to the gesture 
these are the seven event handlers and this is what we call event handling and the most uh, common way to use the event handling is based on these two methods which we have discussed one is direct way that is nothing but firstly you are going to identify the component in your java part next you are going to add the action listener once after adding the action listener it will automatically create a method by name on click inside that on click you are going to place the logic whatever you want as per your requirement second one is indirect way simply you are going to write the method by using any name so once after completing that method you are going to embed that method to that component by going to the design part inside the design part code part for that particular component you are going to place the method name okay this is how you can perform the event handling in your android applications okay thank you one and all